Welcome to the May SLT at Stuyvesant. Um, we are about to get started. Dr. Haber today is going to be acting as our facilitator as Ms. Pedrick is going to be late um, due to, a, uh, well, for whatever reason, she's going to be late. Dr. Haber, it's all yours. Thank you, Ms. Maggio, and uh, welcome and good afternoon. Uh, all the members have received the minutes from the past from the April meeting, and at this point, I would ask for someone to make a motion to accept those minutes. Dr. Haber, we actually need to make one correction. Well, there's two that we know so far. The first one is that Dr. Ned Wadek Moore was kept off the attendance again for last month. Um, she was here. If we can get that corrected, please. Okay. And then somebody else had something. Uh, for me, as a junior representative, is can be coded as a sophomore uh, parent representative, so it has to be corrected. Yeah, also for the um, title, it says uh, agenda. I think it's a minute, not an agenda. So. Yes, we, we're, we're correcting the minutes from last month. So agenda. And sophomore parent versus junior parent, not sophomore parent. OK. You can certainly fix that. Um, any other uh, requests? Okay, then with those, with that said, uh, is there someone that will make a motion to pass this minutes for the April SLT meeting? Okay, so that would be Ms. And seconded by, I have Ms. Mur Murdoch and then Henderson. Mr. Henderson, okay. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Um, opposed? Uh, thank you. The motion is passed. And we'll move on to the next item, I said, Ms. Maggio, you said you wanted to make an announcement prior yeah, to- Yeah, I just need to make one quick announcement for everybody who is um, a seated member of the SLT. When you get your, um, when the email comes out next week, no, sorry, when the email comes out next month with the agenda and the minutes, there's also gonna be the remuneration form and a link to the attendance file that I've been keeping all year. I'm gonna ask that everybody fills in the, their remuneration forms um, through May. And then at the end of the June meeting, we're going to put time on the agenda for everybody to fill in their June line and then finish it and then email it to me. And, and then we're going to post it into a Google Drive so that it's going to be shared with the secretaries here and everybody can get paid nice and quickly. So that's how we're going to take care of the remuneration forms. I just wanted to let you know what the plan was. Thanks, Dr. Haber. Hey. When is the June meeting? Okay. So next we'll have uh, the principal. Message for the principal, uh, Principal Yu. Good evening, everyone. Hopefully you're doing well. Um, I'll be maybe a little tired. Um, so just a few updates uh, on this. Um, you know, as we're closing on the year, you know, we're in the throes of AP examinations. Uh, majority of those are taking place at home uh, digitally. Uh, again, we want to wish everyone good luck on that. Uh, and I've been sending out daily emails just as reminders to students, um, particularly if they have any issues or if they need devices to please let us know. Those are really important. Um, the last, I think, uh, AP examination is June 11th, June 11th, uh, and then we quickly go into Regents exams. Um, and so this is really the update around Regents. Uh, we sent out a letter on May 12th um, from Ms. Ingram about uh, the administration of regents. Uh, there will be three exams um, that are possibly going to be administered in June is Algebra 1, English Language Arts, and Living Environment. So the importance of the letter is that there is a form uh, in which students slash families, if you want to sit for a regents, you actually have to opt in. Uh, this is going to be really important uh, in terms of if there is a desire to uh, sit for a regents that you opt in and you complete that form by uh, May 26 is what we have as a deadline. This will allow us to then start planning accordingly for uh, both the proctoring and the grading because grading uh, or the scoring of the regents exam is going to be done uh, by individual schools. So there are lots of 
uh, planning that's got to be involved uh, in terms of the logistics of the administration. Now, I want to stress this um, just so that we can make sure it's, you know, everyone's as clear as can be. Um, students will not be penalized for not taking or sitting for a regents this year. Uh, that I want to make that very, very clear. You will not be penalized. So if you do not feel comfortable, you do not feel uh, that you want to come into the school, then you have the, uh, then you do not have to take the exam. Uh, and again, you don't need to opt in and you will not be penalized. Uh, the Department of Education has put out policy around waivers. Uh, and really the key piece around the waiver is if a student is sitting in a course that culminates in a regents and ultimately earns the credit for that course, you will automatically get the waiver, okay? Uh, and you have until August of 2021 to get that course credit. So even if a student, you know, is, uh, receives an NX, they can ultimately still receive the waiver, assuming that by August of 2021, they will have earned the credit for that course. Um, again, these are very specific in terms of individualized situations. Vast majority of students uh, will most likely take, the, you know, just automatically get the waiver. Um, but if you have a real desire to come, you know, sit and take the exam, um, what we're going to ask is you fill out the form because then we're gonna follow up with you just to make sure you fully understand, um, you know, again, that you're opting in and why, and if you need to take the exam, uh, because again, there are different reasons and it's kind of nuanced for every single student. Um, but a good example is we've put out the form, we're looking at the results. We have some students who are ninth grader signed up for English language arts. Traditionally, you don't take that until your junior year. So we would follow up with those students, to let them know, because they will have time to be able to do that. Um, but we again request that you uh, complete that form and send it in um, by May 26. So we can, in fact, start preparing for um, if we have to administer those regents examinations. Um, there are a few other pieces in the letter that we sent out. I'm going to ask that you read the letter uh, and ask families to do that. And if they have questions to please, please reach out. Because again, some of this is very individualized, uh, but we want to make sure that the information uh, is clear to, to students and families. And then if, again, there's any questions to please reach out. Uh, please speak with your counselor in particular, because then they can look specifically at your transcript and work with you to determine, uh, you know, what makes sense for you, uh, particularly around the regents. Um, so let me let me stop there and see if there are any questions, because again, a lot of this is based upon the letter and then it very individualized cases. Okay. All right. Um, and if there is, please feel free to come down and, and, and ask. Uh, the next thing I wanna uh, quickly talk about is summer and September uh, reopening. Um, so, you know, one of the things that you're seeing across uh, you know, the news and across Twitter and every other uh, outlet is kind of the reopening of New York City. Um, I've had several conversations, uh, you know, with, with Alex and Connie and, and, uh, as well. and. Um, a variety of different groups of just around, you know, what what is next year, what is the summer next year going to look like, particularly with the reopening of New York City and everything else uh, that's been happening. Uh, so, one, we are trying, uh, you know, to plan accordingly. Uh, we're having to think about all our resources, all the things that we're going to need to do, and what decisions we can make uh, under the current circumstances and what we are hearing and seeing. Uh, I think Ms. Daves can attest, uh, she's working closely with her union. I'm working closely with, uh, with our union to try to get as much information. Uh, and what the, what's currently out is that more details need to be provided in order for us to make more definitive plans uh, on a number of different fronts. So in the absence of that, uh, we are working uh, you know, as deliberately as we can to think about what summer will look like and then ultimately what that would mean for the fall. So again, I've made some, uh, descriptions around what we we're doing for the summer. Uh, we are solidifying uh, our summer plans. Uh, there are still lots of questions that I've sent out to the Department of Ed to try to get some things answered. And just to give you a little bit of the complexity here is that um, with the courses in progress, the NXs uh, versus students who uh, don't have that anymore, 
but need to retake the course. They're essentially two separate programs. Uh, and right now as a staff uh, and, our, and our leadership team, we're trying to determine how we can potentially create a summer program that can fit the various needs of students. And that's just from the academic side. And that doesn't even include the other schools who are gonna be at our school site. Um, but in addition to that, we're looking at doing an accelerated health course as well, um, because we know that we've been trying to work and, and get, uh, get that reorganized so that we can make sure that students uh, have that opportunity. Additionally, we're looking at the social emotional uh, aspects of really trying to build some connection. We've already been in conversations uh, uh, with an organization that's going to be able to kind of work with us on some different touches throughout the summer um, that works within this kind of complex program that we're, we're creating. Um, and, and again, we're excited about it. We think that there's a lot of possibilities here. Um, but again, there's still a lot of question marks that we're waiting on some answers. A few of those uh, question marks are around personnel. Uh, again, you know, we're, we're going to recruit and try to work with as many uh, teachers, uh, you know, both within Stuyvesant and, and across the city who might be willing to work. Uh, it's been a really challenging year, so completely understand uh, that everyone's at a kind of tipping point. So, you know, we have to be really mindful about what type of program we're running uh, to try to create as many flexibilities, while also making sure that we're able to, to follow all the, the protocols and procedures. Same thing for students and, and families. Uh, you know, you're all tired as well and having to figure out what your summer plans are uh, and maybe also getting a break as well uh, so that you can also kind of prepare yourself for the fall. So these are all things that are kind of getting solidified day by day. Um, a few key things that we, we wanna put out there. One is we're gonna be sending out communication to students and their families. Um, for those who received an NX in the second marking period. So any student who received an NX in, their, in the second marking period, you're gonna get a letter uh, explaining that, again, you should be aware that summer school uh, might be an option for you. And again, that's gonna be coming out soon. Uh, we're gonna make sure that that, you know, again, tries to give you some idea of where, you're, where the student is in relation to whether or not summer school will be an option for them. Uh, additionally, we'll be sending out some correspondence to students uh, around the health accelerator program uh, that we've done before. Uh, those will be some key communication and we'll try to make sure that that's really highlighted so that you can be on the lookout for that. Uh, the other thing that's really critical here is, again, um, because we're trying to transition into the, to the new school year, uh, it's been strongly encouraged that the summer program is in person. Uh, we're going to highly encourage that as well. We're creating a program around in-person. Now, one of the things that we're having to consider is some version, potentially either school-based or potentially centralized, that there might be some, you know, again, uh, flexibilities around students and or families who need some re remote element uh, to the summer program. Uh, we haven't gotten any definitive answers on that, but Again, our crux of our program is in person, and that's what we're going to lay out uh, in terms of how we're planning uh, the summer out. Now, a few things with what we're looking to uh, to find out in the summer is one, again, when we have more bodies in the building, what does that mean from a safety protocol standpoint? So, uh, one, we're having to look at ventilation. We're, we're going to have to look at um, social distancing mask wearing, all of the different things that we're currently doing now, um, but potentially with more bodies in the building. We wanna make sure that the building continues to remain safe, uh, ventilation continues to flow uh, accordingly, and that we're following all the procedures as possible. We'll get a better sense because we will have more students since we're gonna have different schools here. And, and again, uh, a lot more uh, every day kind of in person. Uh, the other things too is that we're going to be keeping a close eye on all of the different um, kind of procedures and protocols and guidelines that's happening in congruence with the city. So again, I think the city is going to be taking cues or is going to be evaluating how the reopening is happening, how the reopening is going. Uh, and now with more restaurants opening and all the different public venues, uh, those are all going to be kind of signals about what the school year will continue or potentially would look like. Um, our estimation and our plan moving forward is that this is going to be the school new school year will be a full reopening. Full reopening meaning that students and staff will be in the building five days a week and 
the best way to put it is like school pre-pandemic. Um, that is what the signals seem to be pointing towards. Again, it hasn't been, you know, explicitly uh, set as that, but that's where all the signals are pointing to. That is how the way we're preparing for for next year. Um, we don't have the the energy or the resources to try to think about 15 different plans, uh, and this has been the constant push by all of the unions, uh, and you know again even different city council members, including Mark Traeger, who's the education chair, around getting much more definitive plans. Uh, the CSA sent a letter, uh, I think like two nights ago to the mayor about we need these plans, more definitive um, details because we cannot plan accordingly. And one of those key things was around a remote option, whether that's gonna be school-based or that's gonna be centralized. That will be a critical piece um, because the way that we are currently setting up our program now for the fall is uh, where everyone would be in the building and us running kind of a pre-pandemic school day. Uh, with that being said, you know, a lot of this is also going to be on our families and our students, your comfort level coming back into the building. And what I will say, and I'm going to strongly encourage is that, you know, just like we did with our staff, and what we'll ask our families to strongly consider the vaccine, uh, and, and whether or not it makes sense for you and, and, you know, uh, and your loved ones. Uh, but that's going to be an important piece. So because again, uh, we want to get back into school, we want to get back to kind of our pre-pandemic ways, um, but we also want to do it very, very safely. Uh, and so this is why it's going to continue to be this, this effort around what the reopening could look like. But as I said before, our intent and the way that we're planning is as if it's going to be a full reopening. Um, I know there's still lots of questions and what that what that all means, uh, but a few things to, to kind of put on your radar as well. Um, we don't know yet about what the, the, the distancing rules will be. So space right now is still in question. Um, what we anticipate is that, again, um, those restrictions will likely ease up. Uh, you know, elementary in, elementary school is three feet. Uh, we don't know what that's gonna mean for middle or high schools, but right now we're planning as if we're gonna be able to have everyone back in the building. We know that there are certain classrooms we're gonna to have to take a much closer look at. So we'll have to make some contingencies around those particular spaces. Uh, Chalkbee put an article out last night around questions around space. The DOE had said that uh, that, that most likely would not be an issue. So they're gonna do everything they can to accommodate, um, but that's what we're expecting. Um, but we will have some contingencies around some of the smaller classrooms in which we use that may not be able to have as much circulation if that's what, you know, if, if that's something that we'll have to investigate and, and seeing what the size of number of students can be. Um, but you all did a lot of the pre-work uh, last summer uh, and seeing all the numbers in terms of the classrooms. We're going to use that, you know, again, as a, as a gauge as well. We're going to continue to do a lot of walkthroughs. We're going to continue to con uh, work with the Department of Ed, work with all of you around uh, making sure that you're updated on kind of our progress. And as we get more details, you getting that as well. Um, I wanna just touch on really quickly, I'm gonna ask Ms. Daves uh, to just talk a little bit about what they found out from about the ventilation, because I think that will be important for you to hear. Uh, the UFT uh, did a uh, an, an air quality, I think ventilation uh, check uh, recently and so, I think that might give you some insight about how that was conducted and then what we're going to continue to do throughout the summer. So Ms. Daves, would you mind just sharing a little bit about that? Yeah, certainly. Um, so the UFT has uh, employs industrial hygienists. Um, they come in to test various aspects of buildings um, upon request or when it's required to. Um, we requested them to come in to take a look at room 236 which is the guidance suite. Um, if you have not been there, there's a main entry area, like a lobby area. And then on the perimeter of that space are, you can find each counselor's office. Um, and I believe there's one or two small meeting rooms as well. And when students come into that room, it's into a guidance office. Um, it's a small office and there would be a student and a counselor with the door closed, usually because there's some sort of personal 
conversations that, that is happening. Um, so uh, the industrial hygienist came in to answer the question, um, is the ventilation adequate if we have a counselor and a student in an individual office with the door closed? Um, the, so we had actually three hygienists visit. Uh, I went in for the visit. We also had a member of the custodial staff, staff accompany us because we had to go to the roof to look at one of the ventilation units. He brought us up there. And Principal Yu also um, was there for the parts of the visit. Um, we did a debrief at the end. Uh, what we first did is we went up to a roof area to look at the HVAC that supplies the air to the, to the guidance suite. And the industrial hygienist looked at it and they saw that the way that it is set is that it takes in 100% outside air. And then the air that comes in and goes down to the guidance suite gets pulled back up and uh, all of it spills out to the outside. So the air that's going into the guidance suite is fresh. And then after it goes through, it leaves the building. So there had been a question of whether or not the air in those offices was recirculated air or not, and it is not recirculated air. Uh, <clears throat> then they did various tests of the, uh, of different, different uh, some different molecules in, the, in each suite. Uh, took measurements of things such as carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, uh, a measurement known as PM10, uh, which gives a concentration of particles um, that are very, very small. And from all of the data that they gathered from each of the rooms, I mean, they came in with um, each of them, well, there were three of them, two of them were doing the physical testing, each testing tool, I think they said it was like $15,000. Um, so they're very precise tools. Um, they, they came in, they took the data. A few days later, I received a report and the conclusion of the report was that the ventilation in those rooms is adequate if we are having a counselor and a student in those rooms with the door closed. Um, in those rooms, they also found um, air purifiers. There was one in each room and that helps add to the purity of the air in that room. We said that that was great that we have those. And um, the report also said that, you know, to help prevent COVID spread, you know, to the greatest extent possible, you employ other, you know, other measures, you know, if you can, such as social distancing and, and, and mask wearing and all the things that um, have been said about COVID prevention. Um, so I, I, I think that from, from that analysis, I think that, that that was a very positive result we had from the UFT and I was really glad that they were able to take the time and, and visit um, those spaces. Thanks, Ms. Daves. Uh, the other thing that we did follow up with them on is that, you know, we did talk about our summer program uh, and they said they'd be more than happy to come uh, throughout the summer so we can do some more testing, particularly when there are more bodies here. Uh, and again, uh, they were really you know, helpful, uh, gave us a lot more comfort around, you know, what is happening within the building uh, and in specific places. So again, I think these are all gonna be important throughout the summer as we're moving forward. Uh, uh, John Brennan and the custodial team have been really, really great uh, trying to get as many resources as possible so that we can have things ready to go uh, both for the summer and the, and the new school year. Um, you know, all, all that being said, you know, with the with the kind of the guidelines that will continue, uh, you know, as, as I made mention, people have asked for like different things, whether like, well, what about the SAT or the PSAT? So when I say full reopening, the intent is that all of the things that we have done pre-pandemic are the things that we'll continue to do. Um, so we know that we can administer an SAT. We did it three times this past, uh, this past year. Um, so our intents and purposes is that we're going to kind of run a traditional you know, pre-pandemic uh, school day uh, with some variations, meaning like clearly wearing, you know, mask at this point, unless that's, unless that changes, uh, as well as thinking, you know, or taking into account whatever the distancing measures may or may not be. Um, regardless, we're going to continue to follow as many protocols and keep everyone as safe as possible. But 
those are the ways that we're, we're, we're planning for this. Um, you know, again, I think there's still some, some, some more information we're waiting on. Um, the key piece will be about the remote version. Um, and this is, again, a, a, an important piece. I'd like to believe that next year, kind of our numbers will be the exact opposite. Whereas this year, we've got vast majority of 90% of our students um, being remote. Uh, that next year it will be the exact opposite, and that 90% of our kids will be here. And if there is a you know a group of of remote, that if that is going to be uh, offered, then it would be done, you know, either centrally or there's going to have to be a lot more guidance about how that could happen um, in in terms of this. The last thing I'll say before I you know answer any questions um, is, you know, all of the different many different school districts, including DC and and then. I think New Jersey uh, is saying they're planning for a full reopening. So I imagine that, uh, again, as more districts and more states start to do that, um, New York's been at the head of all of this. I can't believe that we're going to be trailing, uh, you know, for the new school year if other districts and other um, states are moving forward. So that's the way that we're planning at this point. Uh, and and again, I think. You know what we're going to, you know, work on is making sure that you know all families feel comfortable coming back into the building. Uh, we know that there are many families who already feel comfortable, uh, but there's also we want to be very conscientious, uh, both around you know, all the safety measures and, again, giving giving as much comfort to families about having their you know their child back in the building uh, for the next school year. So let me stop there. I, I gave a lot of information. I want to see if I can answer any questions that. People may have. Uh, uh, Principal, you, uh, Dr. Nebudik, uh, made a comment and a question in the uh, in the chat. Um, Dr. Nebudik, uh, sure, I can take a look yeah. at that. Oh, go ahead. I had I had asked about heating and cooling because I know right now, even now in the building, it's pretty cold. Mm -hmm. And uh, if it's if like Samantha Dave said that it's a hundred percent outside air what's going to happen when we're when we're talking about the really heavy winter months and remember we haven't been in the well, building it is like 530s, but we're so gonna give it, it, so uh, that was sort of my concern with the I'm temperature sure and also the nice in the weather. summer when it's really hot so so, so i was just wondering how that was going to be addressed DJ. sorry <laughs> um that's a great question uh right now because of the ventilation uh, and the way it is, all the dampers are open. This is exactly the the point of the why the building is kind of similar to what's happening outside. It's because all the dampers are open. Uh, we are not being efficient <laughs> in terms of the building itself, uh, but the trade off is that we're getting good ventilation. But the temperature is is a question, and particularly so around the winter, you know, the colder months. We don't know yet about how that's going to work. Uh, because again, you know, we've we've erred on the side of more ventilation and and getting outside air, um, but because we got MERV 13s as well, uh, that's the reason we're also keeping the uh, the dampers open. It's, we're trying to maximize the the airflow, but with the MERV 13, the the trade off was that again, because of the way that it works, uh, the motors again, are also impacted on this. And so therefore it takes a lot longer on a warm day to cool down the building. And then it's also the, you know, when it's also harder to warm the building as well. So, you know, we saw this in the media play out for, for many schools uh, where it was extremely cold. You know, this is something we're gonna try to get ahead of uh, in talking to Mr. Brennan, like what are the, what are our options on this? You know, this is one of the reasons why we got, I mean, I don't know how many schools got this, but we got these air filters, uh, purifiers as well. So we've got to think about, you know, when it gets to the colder months, you know, what will be the, you know, how cold will it be? Uh, and then what will be the trade-offs if we have to make any, um, particularly around keeping people warm as well, because that will be a, a, a big issue. Do you have uh, uh, other questions or, or comments uh, for Principal Yu? Gary, Ms. Giordano has her hand up. Thank you, Ms. Maggio, Ms. Giordano. 
Hi, thank you. Um, I have a question less about safety, but just understanding the health class situation. It's been a few years um, that, that the school's been trying to transition health class to freshman year. How close are we to having that done? If, if health is offered this summer, does that mean that the incoming freshman class is all gonna get health? Or are we still behind? Uh, we still haven't gotten to the full, uh, to all the, the, the students. I think there are about 400 more uh, that we've got to get to. We will not get to all of them this summer. Uh, so we're trying to do that as much as we can. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be a little bit longer, but if we can, the goal is if we can get to a hundred this summer, that would be great. And then we'll be able to continue to, to get on pace where we'll be able to get the, the sequencing where we want it to be. Thank you. The one thing I would say, sorry about that. Um, the, uh, we're, we're looking at, a, you know, as much as we don't wanna do this, um, but the fact that this is, you know, again, uh, an accelerated version, uh, if we're wanting to offer that, we're, we're having to see whether or not there's, if, it, if it's going to be a remote option for that, for the health. So as much as we may not want to do that, if we're wanting to keep an accelerated, that might be the only option. So we're investigating which, what, what the option is going to be for this acceler accelerated health for this particular summer. If I could just follow up on that, if, if it was offered remote, couldn't um, it could be possible to get more students in, it, or no, maybe not, maybe not. I mean, we still got to follow certain guidelines on that, but they're, you know, again, and I don't know, I think the other thing too, we were, we're trying to be very conscientious is like, it's been a tough year. So we want to make sure that people who really want to do it, want to do it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, can I ask a question? Uh, is it possible to allow parents to visit school buildings this summer to learn about the safety protocols so that uh, parents are, and the students are more prepared for the fall? Uh, so what I would say is, I mean, we always want everyone to, to you know, learn more about the protocols and, and the building. So the easy answer is yes. Uh, what I would say though is this, uh, if it was just like we could open the doors and you come on in and you know all that, that'd be different. It's a matter of we have to work out all the logistics here. So the simple answer is yes, it's definitely a possibility. The question part is again, that means it's additional staff having to make sure that we're we're able to work with the students and the you know and the and the parents around that. Uh, and and again, if we have the staffing, by all means, we'll we'll definitely do that. We're trying to run a, a variety of things, and and I would always welcome that. We're gonna, you know, we'd love to have volunteers as well, uh, because again, we're we're trying to figure out exactly uh, how many people are going to be in the building, and then kind of the, the program that we're going to run. But yes, the more people that can be informed about protocols and procedures, absolutely, and then in particular, if it's going to create more levels of comfort. Um, so yes. Have any other, uh, we have other questions or concerns uh, for yeah. about, um, So when we go back after this long absence from being in the building, we're gonna have half the school who have, have never taken a class, followed the schedule, rode the escalator, did anything in the building at Stuyvesant. And, <clears throat> you know, even our juniors will, will have barely have been there. And the, I, I'd like to know what, changes you're open to. Um, I know like numerous teachers have been talking about like tossing around different ideas for scheduling and whatnot and just doing any changes to address the, the mental health topic that we've talked about a lot this year and other institutional problems or imperfections that uh, this would be kind of the perfect time to address. For, I mean, for, for a culture change when half the school doesn't know the culture, uh, this would this would be the time to address those things. Sure. Um, so let me start with this. Yes, there have been lots of different ideas uh, around you know possible changes, uh, and we're always going to be open and receptive to it. I mean, and again, we're not short of ideas. We're short of how we can how do we best execute on certain things. So this idea about nine periods has come up, which you know again sounds really interesting. Uh, but then you start bringing into the fact that if social distancing applies, if again, 
number of classrooms, all the things that, again, could potentially put be obstacles. I'm not saying that it can't happen. It just means that these are all things that we have to continue to look at before making a decision that this can actually happen. Uh, you know, again, it creates different types of challenges and issues. And then we have to figure out where could we get some push and pull. The social emotional is tremendously important here. There are a few things that we're doing uh, ideally before the end of this year, in the summer, and then in the start of the new school year. So again, a few things that we're doing. At the end of this year, we're, gonna, we're, we're hoping to administer a survey for students and staff. There's a group called Authentic Connections that we've been in touch with. Uh, we wanna continue having those conversations and work out some of those details. Uh, this is all about well-being, resilience. Uh, it's, uh, and it, I think it could build on the things that we have already done in terms of our own surveys, but having a, you know, a, a, a third party who, again, specializes in the surveys and also works in terms of looking at giving real recommendations in terms of the things that we have under control, I think could be a real good start, particularly as we're thinking about both the summer and the next school year. In the summer, as I made mention, we're gonna be working with a group called My Robin, uh, who's again, based upon the, the summer program, they're gonna be building in you know, different ways of, of social emotional and well-being, um, but it's much more of a light, lighter touch. And then I'm in a conversation right now uh, with counseling in schools uh, around working with us next year. And again, this is also both the personnel as well as kind of a network of resources and really thinking about what can we do to help students and staff transition back in. September is gonna be an interesting month because we're gonna to have to use that time. We're gonna, the, 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 the push I'm sure will be, I'm sure I'm gonna, we're gonna hear from like, we need to jump into the academics because I imagine AP and all of those other things and all the things that we normally you know, are confronted with um, are gonna come into question. But we're really gonna to have to think about September as a way to figure out adjustments uh, in getting everyone acclimated. And it's gonna probably take a little bit longer than that. So the idea of homeroom has also been, uh, you know, again, discuss and thinking where, where could that fit in? Uh, it also means then how do we train, you know, our staff to be able to do that well. And oh, remember- That would be great, but by yeah. the way, I've been a homeroom teacher for 20 years and I keep volunteering for it. Sure. It's so, a great way so, to connect with the students and really get to know them. I mean, if we had it every week, I'd be happy. Sure, I, th I think, like I said, we're not, uh, we're not dismissing any of these ideas. We're, no. we're seeing about like, how does this all plan out and work out? Uh, because again, it ultimately, you know, will be one where we want to provide enough training or continue training to be able to, to support everyone uh, in these endeavors. So that's what we're looking at. And we'll continue to get some guidance, not only from our guidance team, but also from some of these outside organizations who can also help us think around what are the different ways to support, you know, the, the school community. We're also, again, you know, I think we're trying to juggle a lot of different things and, and, and trying to get as, you know, we're trying to get voices in as well. Um, but similarly, like every day is full of different meetings and trying to get people together. Uh, so that would be kind of something we could, we could also talk about um, in terms of being able to hear some of the voices by also figuring out like what's doable. We still haven't gotten our budget. Uh, we're still figuring out a lot around summer personnel. So again, we're open and receptive. We've, a lot of these different ideas I've gotten from, uh, different groups, different stakeholders. So we'll continue to, to, to work with that to figure out what we can actually do. I will say one thing though, um, and, the, and the goal is to try to do things really well. This is gonna be a, this is gonna be a, a, a Herculean effort and it's gonna require everyone to make some compromises here. And, and again, once we make some decisions, I know not everyone's gonna be happy, um, but the goal here is to, uh, think about the movement of the school as well as having enough information to be able to make an informed decision. Uh, I said this before and I'll continue to say, it. I'm not looking to make drastic changes uh, because I don't think we have enough information nor do I feel like I'm in a position yet to know exactly what needs to be changed. Um, that's not to say I'm not open and receptive or I'm not gonna listen and, and, and continue to investigate that. Um, but you know, like I'm not gonna go from having all our APs to no APs. What I am gonna look at and what I'll continue to ask this group to do is to, for us to continue to engage in like what makes sense because I do think a few things. One is we want a very positive educational experience uh, for students that's robust both in the academics but also that the kids enjoy the experience, that they're extracurricular, that um, the things that they are interested in 
they could continue to investigate and explore. That might also be looking at our STI diploma or STI endorsement. What are the requirements uh, that we are asking students to, uh, to fulfill in order to get a STI endorsement? You know, and I think these are all the things that I want to investigate. And that's going to take a little bit of time. Uh, not everything is going to get changed, you know, immediately. But I do agree with you, you know, around the culture. It's going to be a little bit of a culture shift on uh, a variety of stakeholders. And so, again, you know, I'm open and receptive to it. I just will say this. It's been a really taxing and challenging year for everyone. And not that we're not going to try to utilize this opportunity. I just also want to be very cognizant of the fact that using this year as a baseline is also uh, one that I have some hesitancies around. Oh, abs yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think this year brought a lot of things to light, mm -hmm. like lingering problems, uh, like the, um, the mental health issue. Like my first reaction when I heard it from the parents was, well, I mean, we, we've been dealing with this at school on some level, but I think that the parents are seeing it more now. Uh, I mean, it's obviously, I think it's been both amplified and magnified. Uh, you know, we're it, it's it's greater, and we're getting a better look at it. Um, but I think it it brought a lot of problems to light that have existed already. Um, I mean, like like the the failure rate has been growing for the last decade. Uh, but obviously, with the uh, annexes, that's been that's been thrown into the spotlight a lot more. But that's a bit, that's a problem that's been going on for a long time. So no, you're right. This is not the baseline year, but I mean, it, I think it is the the we should take the time between now and September to really evaluate some of these things and see what we can change. So we can really make it, like you said, more of a positive experience for students. So, I mean, does this body, I guess my question here is what's the role of this body in doing that? I think that's a great question for everyone to like to chime in on. I think the one thing I will say is, is this, um, every administration is different. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. I said this at the very beginning, uh, we've got a variety of stakeholders here and we have an opportunity to work collectively on this. I think I said this in a conversation I'm going to say out here to everyone. Um, every conversation I have with, uh, with the different stakeholders I've had, um, there's a lot of solutions being brought to me. Okay. I've been here since July. I've worked in New York City public schools got a pretty good experience, uh, you know, working in, uh, in a variety of schools. No, it hasn't necessarily been Stuyvesant and it never has been in the pandemic year. So what I've been trying to do is learn as much as possible from the different angles and from the different lenses that I get. Uh, we're not short on solutions. The, the, the place where I think we're, we're having to do is to examine a problem, make sure that we're all identifying the same problem and recognizing some of the gaps in terms of you know, where there is certain pieces of information. And, and again, I know that not everyone's privy to, you know, what I'm privy to uh, and trying to think about all the different parts that come together. Uh, and that's what we're trying to figure out is like, where can we fill some of these gaps so that there's an understanding? Like the decisions aren't necessarily hard to make. It's, a, it's around, can we move an entire school community and to come to some level of consensus so that we can have that experience and understand why we made those decisions. I think this group here can offer a, a, a very uh, insightful lens. And the intent here is that you're representing your constituency, con constituency groups. Uh, and then when you bring it back here that again, we're able to then be representative of the groups that we are leading. I think in terms of setting policy, all of those different things, the policy has to be executed, right? It's gotta be executed and followed and all of those things. Uh, am I receptive to listening to the different voices and, and, and doing that? Absolutely. Um, but this is a consultative group. It's a consultative group who have strong opinions and gonna get strong information to make an informed decision. Uh, I am not gonna make a policy or try to create policies without your input. I think that's, that would, you know, one, I don't think that's a smart move. And then two, it would be, it wouldn't be leveraging, you know, these valuable insights and resources. Um, but I also need to come to an understanding of the group I'm working with, the different individuals and 
a lot of what I'm doing right now is trying to make sense of the different needs uh, and ask of the variety of stakeholders. We should use this group as ways of dissecting key issues and being very cognizant of the ways that it impacts different stakeholders, because I think that's where we're going to get to some real movement. Because at the end of the, all of this, it's like, great, homeroom is great, but we need everyone to be on board around the home, you know, around homeroom and then being able to, to execute on that. It's the same thing for any of the things that we're dealing with now. So I would say this group absolutely should be providing as much input and exploring and dissecting some of these issues and then coming back to be able to figure out like what are the ways that we can move an entire school community in that direction. Thank, Thank you. you, I appreciate that. Principal Yu, next we have uh, uh, Mr. Shafrin and then follow that with Mr. Giordano. Thank you. Um, I appreciate appreciate principal that, and particularly the point that you bring up about the not jumping to rush decisions. I think this is this is exactly what we're looking for. We, we want to make sure that you develop a really solid understanding of what this community wants from different points of stakeholders. Um, kind of switching the topic, uh, shifting it, but uh, addressing something that you said before. Um, you talked about the planning that is done fully with, with, with the goal of back to pre-COVID style in September for all the students. And that makes many, many families um, really, really excited and looking forward to it. Uh, one point I want to bring up, and I, I would like you to comment on that, is that while that is the plan for students and uh, those uh, and the staff that, uh, that is able to, or that doesn't have medical accommodation, uh, that is not necessarily uh, going to be the case from what I understand, or at least it's not clear if that's going to be the case for various events involving parents and families. Um, because from what we've heard, obviously for the last year and a half or a little bit less, we had an exemption for various PA events, uh, which officially should take place on school, on school property. And we had an exemption for that. That's why we were able to do it virtually. But once that exemption is removed, technically, all the PA events should come back, or at least all the general meetings and EB events would need to come back in school property. And so far, we've heard that this the decision has not been made on this, and there may be an extension or some possible change in this. So if you could comment on this, please, yeah. that would be very helpful. I'll comment with what I know, which is I know that the details haven't come out yet. What I would say is, you know, it's an interesting question. I, I was interviewed from the spectator about what I thought about the snow days and the new policies. I think remote, a version of remote is going to exist and ideally should be leveraged that in ways that make sense. Now, that's the hard part. Like, where does it make sense? And when is it really useful? I think when you think about um, kind of the, and what you said, pre-pandemic, what I, when I mean pre-pandemic is students and staff being back in the building. Now, didn't go into details about like what exactly that looks like, but beyond like, you know, us being back in the school and and some of the some of the normal things that we had we had done, that would also be into account like PA events and, and SLT. I think we would want to encourage getting back in person because I think there's some relationships and there's kind of those interactions that we got to get custom, accustomed to again. I think that the city is going to have to, or the DOE is going to have to make some decisions around like how rigid they're going to either go back to in terms of having one way or the other, or whether they're going to create those flexibilities, which then creates more questions, I'm sure. But, you know, I'm going to encourage that we try to be back in the building, uh, if that as safely as possible, with the recognition that there might need to be some flexibility around a remote version. Whether that the city will allow that, it's another story. But I imagine because of the way that they've been pushing, that they're going to want to do that. Um, because again, it's about it's more than just allowing it. It's another thing about creating the comfort level. Because as we know, not every student or family is ready to go back into the building. Uh, and so I think again, trying to get a better understanding of how our community feels. I'd like to believe that we could encourage getting back into the building for all the different events, um, because I do think it's a different dynamic. And I do think one, it's gonna take some time to get acclimated. It might be a gradual release as well, where like in the very beginning, there, you know, there could be much more flexibility with the remote. And then as we get, hopefully as things get better, that it then becomes more in-person. 
Thank you for that. But but just uh, just to comment, um, kind of as a follow up, we we certainly there's a lot of advocacy for keeping the both options in because, mm -hmm. as you mentioned, having the having a remote option for families to be engaged has been simply invaluable. We've yeah. gained a significantly more families and parents involved, and it, it will be a shame to lose that. Not only with this, but with many other PA related things. So. Yeah. Um, Obviously, we'll, we'll take it offline, but just wanted to bring this up. Thank you, Mr. Shafrin. Uh, now recognize uh, Julian Giordano. Thank you, Dr. Haber. Um, I wanted to circle back to the topic of mental health, which um, Mr. Wazowski brought up, and I appreciate that. Um, I realized it's now been, I think, this is our, our second SLT meeting. I think it's been about eight weeks since we looked over the accountability document that was created with all the constituencies and the action steps that they were taking to address um, mental health problems within the classrooms and within our school. And the promise was that that document would be shared with the school community, which I was, was really going to be great and really a great sign to the community of what the school is, is doing and is currently doing to, to, to change, you know, the response to COVID and, and the response to remote learning and support students' mental health. And I think it would just be really disappointing if that didn't get out before the end of the year, because I think families deserve to see what's happening and to see the great work that's being done. So I just wanted to check in about when, when that's going to be shared. It's on Talos, I believe. Ms. Mm -hmm. Ingram, I don't know if you can respond to that. We were going to put it on Talos, and I think it's yeah. on the blog. It, it, is, um, it is in the document hub. We can also additionally add it as opposed to the blog if you'd like, but it is already shared on the document hub under policies and also under guides. Will it be sent out as an email to families as we mentioned I, at the SLT? Um, if I can link it to, to my weekly update, um, I don't know if we would do a separate and distinct email for that, but we can definitely link it to the uh, weekly update this coming week yeah. and make note of it. All right. Yeah, it's Thanks. public. We can definitely make, I mean, I have no problem sending, we can send that out for sure. Yeah, we got I, I think I, I, I most people, but I don't think a lot of people would have seen it on, on Talos automatically. Um, so it'd be good to, to send that out. Sure. I had just a, a, just a second follow-up question. I'm really grateful to hear that you're working with counseling and schools and authentic connections. And I think that's a really going to be a helpful partnership for the school next year. Um, I know as a, from a student perspective, we were thinking for this meeting, I think we, we wrote it in our email to snatch it about suggested agenda items that it would be helpful to do a survey um, before the end of the year with, with students and parents and teachers to get a sense of what what their thoughts are around some big topic issues because last year we had to send out surveys in the summer and it, it, you know it was hard to do but I'm, I'm really excited to hear that that you're working with authentic connections to do a survey um to the entire school that would hopefully be you know more thorough and more vigorously analyzed i was just hoping um would it be possible for um some stakeholders from each of the constituencies to be able to have some input or at least look over the questions before they're sent out so that we can collect the data that would be helpful yeah i don't know uh again uh let me send you some of the information about authentic connections, because again, I think their questions, uh, I don't know if they develop new questions for each new for each school community or if they've got their their tool that they use. So let, let me start there, because then again, I don't know how much feedback we get. What we will get from my understanding is uh, an opportunity to talk about what we have under our control. So they're going to want to know a little bit more about the school community. And that might be the place where we're going to want to offer or like, here's where different stakeholders uh, are involved and where there could be some places where we can control some of, you know, again, any of the execution. So let me, uh, again, I have another follow-up meeting with them uh, in terms of just making sure that we're clear on when and when, when and how we're going to be able to do this. Got it. Great. And then, so and I do get to follow up about that. And then I guess, depending on what the answer is, and maybe just putting it out there that it might be a good idea to meet with some of the heads of the stakeholders here. So we can maybe do our own, you know, survey around some other types of questions that might be helpful for us in the summer. Um, yeah. Thank you, Principal. Yu. I think Sarai, I thought, <laughs> Sarai, why don't you go ahead and go? I'm going to break the line. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, so I have two questions for Mr. You, Mr. Principal Yu. Um, <laughs> for, yeah, that was, uh, anyway, so first of all, I just wanted to double check that June 14th will be the last instructional day. Yes. Great. That is the last instructional day. And the end of marking period three. Yep. The second thing was just whether or not there is going to be an established finals week um, or whether all teachers are going to have that up to them. Uh, we have uh, two finals days, the 15th of June 
and the 16th. So on the 15th, there will be world language level one, two, and three. Uh, and then on the 16th, uh, I think it's uh, geometry pre-calculus and then Dr. Haber, which one else am I missing? Uh, I think the algebra, I don't have to check. Algebra two, I think. So geometry, algebra two, and pre-calculus. Uh, and those will be the two days of the uniform finals. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Ms. Giordano. Ms. Giordano. You're on mute. Thanks. Um, I just wanted to circle back to something, Mr. Yu, that you just said um, with, when um, I think Mr. Wisotsky brought up the question about how the SLT was going to be used in discussions about the future. Um, and, and I just wanted to circle back to the fact that the SLT is like the only forum where we have all four constituencies who meet on a regular basis. And I, I would just like to say, having been part of SLT for a few years, that I would hope that there would be more discussion in this space because it's the only chance that parents, students, teachers, and admin are in a room together to talk about things. Mm -hmm. I know that each of these groups talks with you individually, but we don't get to hear each other enough. Mm -hmm. And I really think um, it would be great if, if, this, if this body was used that way, as opposed to being a more presentational space, that it's more great. of a conversational space. Uh, so I it wasn't really a question. It was, just, it was just kind of a comment of just knowing what this, this space can be. Sure. Thank you. Okay. Um, anyone else has their hands raised? Otherwise, we'll have uh, principal continue with his yeah. presentation. Okay. Julian, can you put, is your hand still up, Julian, or did you forget to put it down? Oh, I think, oh. I have a second question, but please let Ms. Murdoch go before me. Um, my question is, uh, right now for blended um, learning students, they have a randomly testing COVID test. Um, so if we have a like full body of students coming in the fall, how does it going to happen? You're going to be more tests or uh, so that's one question. And the other one is, so um, the once the kids coming, students coming, then all this PTA meeting and all the meeting will be in person at school or we are going to continue this Zoom meeting um, for safety? Yeah. Uh, I'll, so with the COVID testing, um, that was once blended started, you know, since January on, uh, that it was happening on a weekly basis. Uh, whether the city will be able to continue to do that, I don't know, but at, that would be the expectation that they, at least in the short term, it would be on a weekly basis uh, at the at, at all the schools, because uh, that's what's currently, you know, happening now. Uh, and then it would be, again, uh, random kind of selection. I think they're doing 20% of, of, you know, the students who are in the building. And in the case in the fall, you know, again, that could be a lot of students. Um, so I don't know exactly what their percentage will be to do kind of the, the, the testing. I anticipate that the testing will continue to happen um, definitely at the start of the school year. And then I'm sure continued uh, until, you know, again, unless circumstances change. So that's going to be the expectation. We're currently doing it now. We just administer it for the PSAL. We had a, you know, a testing there. So I imagine that's going to continue to, to happen. And then I think this goes back, back to what Mr. Shafron uh, said around like, you know, what, what will be the flexibilities uh, in, you know, PA meetings, SLT meetings. And again, I think that's going to be it. We'll try to create as many flexibilities um, because I think we want to leverage the technology, um, not use it to, you know, to minimize. So I think that's going to be something that we'll have to decide. I think, as I mentioned before, we're going to encourage that we, you know, if at all possible, come together uh, in as many events. But we clearly recognize not everyone's going to be as comfortable yet, um, and hopefully, this will be kind of a gradual release. You know, in terms of you know us being able to be back in the room in one space. But I think, as as we also want to be mindful of, we've got this tool. We should use it, and uh, and if it means you know being able to get more people involved. Absolutely. We just have to work out the logistics around it and agreements around it. Thank you. Thanks for that.
Uh, Julian uh, Giordano, you have your hand raised? I recognize Julian yeah. Giordano. Thank you, Dr. Haber. Sorry for the, the second question. This isn't so much facing the future next year. It's actually a question relating to the current um, blended option school, which Chevalier and I are both in. Um, and yesterday there was uh, an incident where um, we were, you know, the the STI cohort of, of juniors and seniors. Um, I'm, I'm just explaining for, the, for those of you who might not be familiar with this. Um, the, the junior and senior cohort is, was meant to come in um, on Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays, came into school yesterday. And then, and the reason I'm asking is I'm actually not sure what happened, but I entered and then was sort of turned around and told that we weren't supposed to be there that day, even though it had been sort of sent out by the administration in, in emails that we were. And it was sort of confusing. So I was just wondering what, what the situation is with that. I've heard varying things. I've heard that the Wednesdays are now going to be alternating by week from, from peg days to sty days. And I was just wondering, you know, what, what happened there and, and how can that be prevented in the future? Because I know a lot of, I'm fortunate I live close to sty, but a lot of students had to do a really lengthy commute home and, and miss some classes because of that. Sure. Uh, so one, I think, again, this goes back to, you know, what are, what's, what are the ways that we're communicating? And then what are the ways that people are, 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 you know, reading the material. So a few things I think happened. One is we originally started trying to set that kind of cadence uh, originally in April, um, but then, and where we had more of the kind of, uh, now I'm kind of the peg group, which are the ninth and 10th graders come in. Uh, originally when we started this uh, in April, they were coming in on Mondays, uh, and Wednesdays, sometimes even Tuesdays, but because of the SAT, it, and there was adjustments that had to be made. When we started counting out the days for May and June, we try to create much more kind of balance so that the ninth and 10th graders weren't coming in that much more than the juniors and seniors. So we had changed some of the dates, but we had put it in our calendars not only did we you know, put it on in the blog, send it out to students as well, but clearly not everyone got the message. So I think one is just a miscommunication. And then again, going back to like, how do we make sure everyone's getting the information, knowing that they have to look at that in order to be able to know what's happening uh, across. I think this case is just really miscommunication and we got to work on making sure everyone is getting it uh, and, and recognizing like, here's the adjustment. That's both on you know staff as well as once we're sending more information out to families and to students, you know, please be uh, aware. Principal Yu, I'd like to make a comment on to Julian. Sure. Uh, sorry, uh, Julian, you know, I know I understand. And for those who, you know, were turned around, um, not our best day, not our best moment. Um, I'll take responsibility for that because I coordinate all the, you know, the communications, although the communication director is, is uh, you know, the, Ms. Ingram, I'm still to look at all, make sure that it's all, it's all the same. And uh, I failed in that. And that's, that's why that happened. And uh, again, I'm sorry that happened and we'll uh, do better going forward. I guess kind of following up on my own question and also Mr. Adano's follow-up um, and I guess some of the other questions is that, so a lot of people are thinking about next year and different constituencies are going through different ideas, different concerns. Um, and uh, Principal, you, you said it has really lended an ear to every constituency and seems to take everything into consideration. Is there, is there anywhere, and perhaps this body could do that, could we discuss a lot of these ideas that have been presented? Um, you know, obviously no decisions have been made on it. I mean, maybe some decisions have been made, whether to do things or not, but I mean, is that something we could, we could discuss in this body at our uh, last meeting, perhaps? Absolutely. Like some of the ideas that have, that have, that have made there, because I know some of them, I mean, I've been involved in with groups of teachers that have brought ideas to your office, and um, but there are other groups that that you know you you have an open door for everybody's coming in, so you, you know what I mean. So we don't know all the other ideas that are making your way to your office and other administrators' offices. Um, is that something next month we could? 
discuss here? Is that something we can put together? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I, I I don't, and I'm and I'm sorry. I'm not come you up on the spot. That's you know, that's why. I'm... No, no, it's okay. I, I'm just, I, you know, I, I think. I mean, that there's two things I wanted to say about that. One is absolutely, uh, and I hope we. I haven't given the impression that like that this shouldn't be used. This body shouldn't be used for these types of discussions. I think they they should be. Um, but I, the one thing I would say as we think about this is, you know, and I mentioned this earlier, like, let's have the conversation, not with the solution in mind. Let's come and have the conversation with what are we trying to resolve or solve and where do we want to go? Because again, part of what, and I'm just as an observer and, and com the, the conversations I've, I've had with different groups, uh, there, there's already a solution and the change has already been asked, right? And I'm not sure what the, pro, you know, again, like I, I intuitively know what the, the, the issue is, but again, I think that's the, the, the thing. It's like, can this group investigate an issue and hear it from the various stakeholders as opposed to dissecting the, pro, uh, dissecting the solution and whether that solution works for each of the stakeholders. That's where I think this body could really, really be, be be valuable because if we're talking about a culture shift, we're talking about a uh, school shift. Well, it starts with this body because we're representing the various constituencies, and so therefore, if we're not coming from the angle of like here's the solution to fix this, but rather well, let's talk about the pro let's talk about the issue, and th and this is how students are affected. This is how administrations are affected. This is how teachers are affected. This is how parents are affected. Then we can come up with possibly a solution that could work, that there's enough buy-in from all parties that we can make it work. And I, that's the, the lens I would love to take and absolutely would love to see that happen. Uh, oh, and, okay. continue that. and even like, even for some of the things you come up with these great ideas and then you bring it to another constituency and then you realize, wait a second, there's some flaws in this because I didn't look at it from that angle. So I, I mean, that is that is something that this group I think could do and do really well. Oh. So I appreciate that. Thank you. So you might have some questions about this. I just want to quickly talk about extracurricular and PSAL. Um, right now, PSAL is currently happening, very abbreviated season. Uh, expectation is that for the fall, uh, they're going to ramp up as well. We anticipate we're going to get more details about what the summer might look like, uh, but we anticipate PSAL will be full force where there will be, again, the regular seasons. Right now, for, for those who don't know, the all the seasons were combined we just had to find the sports that we could find coaches for next year i'm anticipating uh and that what we're getting the signals is that they're going to be uh, the the seasons and the sports that are aligned with those seasons extracurricular is something that's going to be uh we want to put on the radar for everyone i think this is going to be very important and i think uh, this has come up uh, a few times you know the different events that we do seeing the different clubs all the different the the things that make uh, I think uh, being back in the building worthwhile as well is these activities. So a few things that we have to consider, and, and, and there's a little bit of homework uh, that I'm going to ask, unfortunately, of the of the SU on this. Um, but supervision is going to be really important for a number of reasons next year. Uh, one is there are going to be some clear guidelines. Or ideally, it will be clear guidelines around you know anything COVID related. So you know, what we may have done pre-pandemic, we might not be able to do uh, or should do uh, in, you know, conditions for when we go into the new school year. So one is we need to look and make sure, one, um, we know what clubs are going to exist, what potential days they might want to meet, and then whether or not there is an advisor. Uh, and I'm bringing this up, this doesn't have to be in concrete, but we're trying to get some ideas because if we are gonna be able to run extracurricular, extracurricular, which we will do, we need some structured way to do it. And we need some ideas about how we can do that. Um, because again, I do believe, and I'm almost certain that there are gonna be some COVID safety regulations around this, and it's going to be important that we do have supervision. Uh, the, other, the other thing is we've talked to, you know, and I think uh, uh, Ms. Ju had, me, had asked around being in the building. We would love to work with our parents as well about maybe some volunteering and such so that we can make sure that um, that extracurricular activities are you know, frequent and, and present, but we have to be very, very mindful of, of the supervision piece here because we're gonna ensure the safety of everyone. So 
that's our intent is to have our extracurriculars. It just needs to be in a very structured way uh, so that we can ensure everyone's safety. And so again, we'll, we'll work with, uh, with, uh, with our SU to see if we can get some preliminary information. So that way we can start setting the stage for right when we start the new school year, um, you know, having a structured way to, to continue these activities. Um, is there anybody else with a comment? Dr. Haber, we're going to need to call on um, the one attendee who has a question. Julian, yes. what's up? Sorry, I feel like I'm talking a lot this meeting. <laughs> I, this is a, the final comment, and it's, it's sure. once again going back to the issue, and it's actually a question directed at the entire SLT, but just to get the PA. Um, now that I'm reminding, remembering all of the, the mental health conversations that we had earlier on, I remember that when we presented the student survey, the parents were very adamant about wanting to do a parent survey. And I remember multiple emails getting sent out to parents about that. And I'm sure they've gotten a lot of responses. So I'd love to see when those results can be shared with us so that we can at least see them. Um, and yeah, I'm just curious when, when we can get access to those results. Sure, sure absolutely. We, we actually just discussed this earlier today. I'm literally anticipating your question now, but but it was it was something. But we um, we just discussed this today, and the um, most likely what we will propose to do is to add it to the uh, June SLT agenda as a, in a presentational form, but releasing the results with the community before that, so everyone has time and and to actually review them before before we get to the next SLT. So this is something that we've uh, discussed. Again, we'll reconfirm our plans, but that was our preliminary plan um, that we uh, that we uh, we hope to implement. Thank you, Mr. Shepard. Sure. It, at this time, I'm gonna call on parent, Linda Quarles. Hi, can everyone hear me? Okay, so um, um, what I wanted to say is um, I'm really excited to hear the direction for the fall and the opening. As a new parent, one thing I noticed last summer is um, sitting in, in a bunch of these and other sessions is how much burden it seemed to me that the DOE was putting on individual schools and groups like yourselves that seemed like you were working late hours into the night all summer, putting together plans, putting redoing them, and to me, I mean, I felt really empathetic for this group who I think worked more than overtime last summer. And uh, my question for this summer is due to so many dynamics, including mayoral election, um, just a, a lot of things, um, who is making this decision and do we have any sense of when and how can parents help to advocate for some clarity in that direction? Because I know there are a lot of things that are out of the control of this group. And to me, it seems incredibly, almost, you know, brutalistic the way that this group was treated and across the, you know, DOE system, every single school, I have kids in multiple schools, parents and administrators coming together hour after hour after hour. And I'm amazed that you all made it through. And I would just like to ask, like, do we know who is making this decision? when and if we don't which it sounds like we don't how can we help to say we at least need clarity on that it's really really it seems unfair and of course the families as well but just because from what little i saw here i think a lot of families were protected from all the bullets that this group was taking that's a great uh, that's a great question um you know this group right when i came in uh was working tirelessly and uh, I think, you know, just this is what I think schools and families have all been trying to get clarity. And, and listen, this is not to place blame on anyone. No one's been under this uh, and everyone's looking for decisions so that we can then make decisions. Uh, the key thing for for kind of what I believe here is that we, you know, we need just need some decisions so that we can start making some planning. Uh, and I think that's what's been the the, the, the challenging part here. Um, and again, I think the question that you're alluding to is right now, Mayor de Blasio makes these decisions and working with the chancellor and New York City public schools and will do so until the new election uh, and then until uh, the end of the year. Uh, so one is, I think, again, 
what everyone I think continues to do, which is city council members, um, like I said, uh, education, uh, the education chair, Mark Traeger just tweeted out something around more decisions need to be made for families and for fa uh, schools, tell us what the remote option is going to be. Um, all the signals around what New York, New York City's reopening, you know, kind of, I mean, Al, and Mr. Schaffron said this is like, you know, how can we allow like Broadway to fully open and then not know necessarily about what schools are going to, you know, like it just, there's a, there's just a contradiction and, and kind of that we have to be able to, ideally, I think Mayor de Blasio understands that, would like to be able to understand like why we need to, if we're going to reopen the rest of the city, how can we not at least start doing that for the schools and making these definitive plans uh, sooner than later. But right now it's going to be up to the mayor and, and the chancellor. And then again, you know, these, if you've been listening to any of the kind of the mayoral debates and all of and, and the, the candidates, I mean, I think they all are expressing different opinions uh, and right now they all vary. So I think the, the best way is to continue to, to work with the various groups around what are the things that we're advocating for. We're doing that with our union. I'm sure Ms. Dave's and, and our staff are doing it with theirs uh, around getting more information. And I think, fortunately, we're, we're kind of in that position um, and trying to make as many plans as we can with the things that we have under our control. But it does. It, it re, I mean, I think what I would say that what I would say this is everyone looks like me. Everyone's a little bit tired right now. So I mean, this has been a long year. Uh, and the more that we can try to get, you know, do as much as we can, we, we will. But uh, hopefully in the in the next few weeks, we will get more information ASAP so that we can continue to plan accordingly. Okay, thanks. I was just going to um, add to that a little bit. Um, our experience last in March of 2020 and in summer of 2020 um, were both that we wanted um, clarity from the city long before we got clarity from the city. And, um, you know, um, on, you know, Friday, March 13th, 2020, I know a whole bunch of uh, teachers um, spent a lot of that day writing and placing um, like, our, you know, op-eds essentially in, in newspapers and and that frankly, they were like sort of, I know Ms. Daves was involved in um, some, some press over the summer as well, trying to get clarity and helping us like the whole city kind of plan. Um, and I think like, you know, parents, any, you know, anything you can do to publicly push and ask for this would be helpful to us. Um, so like, all right, if you, if you do have some way of, you know, writing an op-ed, awesome. Um, if you can call uh, your, you know, city council people, awesome. But like, just the publicly pushing for this is all that, is, is the only way we like got schools to go remote in the first place is the only way we really got um, clarity about what the, you know, what this school year would look like. Um, I assume, you know, it's like the biggest school system in the country and maybe the world. I don't know. It's like impossible. Uh, and the, the actual mayoral election won't be until November. Um, the primaries are soon, but uh, it, it will be the same people who are running the system now and who have been. Yeah. I recognize at this time, uh, Ms. Daves. Thanks. Um, so thank you for speaking, Linda. Um, and I also really want to thank this team for all the work any of you who were here last summer um, that worked on it. And I want to, uh, you know, it was difficult because schools were not getting answers. Um, you know, I don't, I can't predict the future. I don't think, crossing my fingers, maybe the timing won't be as bad as last summer. Um, but I think one of the things um, schools struggle with right now is getting guidelines on if there is a remote option, what that is gonna look like, because that's gonna completely transform programming. Um, and as Mark said, if there's anything you can do to speak up to say, please give some schools some answers so they can start the job of programming for fall, that would be enormously helpful, not just for Stuyvesant, but all schools around the city. Uh, Principal Yu, would you like to continue with your presentation? 
I'm done. Okay. All right, then uh, in that case, I um, want to wish. Nope, I'm sorry, Gary, one sec. Sure. Um, Mr. Saffron, I totally forgot, so thank you for reminding me, Dina. Um, Mr. Saffron sent me an email earlier. There's a conflict with our June date with the PA event. Um, right, you, June, yep. 16th, June 15th is something for the PA, and the PA is requesting that we change the date from June 15th to June 17th, I believe you said? That's that's correct. June fifteenth is the PA Thursday meeting again in June instead of the normal Tuesday meeting. Mm -hmm. That was the suggestion. Thank you. Um, let me see where I have it listed as. It's a Thursday, I think. Seventeenth. Mm -hmm. Um, yes, actually, Sam, I, you're correct. According to my schedule, where we put, where we picked people for facilitator and secretary, I actually already have it as June seventh. Um, I remember we thought this through in the beginning of the year, and we put it on the seventh. Okay, that's. I, I guess we added incorrectly on our calendars. That's that's fine. So June seventh is uh, is not in conflict with either EB, which is on the eighth, or the PA general meeting, which is on fifteenth. Okay. Sounds good. We were so efficient in the fall, we totally didn't even remember. Thank you. All right, Gary. Hey, at this time, I'd like to offer for the for the good and welfare of the entire SLT and families and local constituencies related to Stuyvesant High School, all the best to you and your loved ones. And on that note, I would ask if someone would make a motion to adjourn this SLT oh, meeting. I make a motion. Is there a second? Okay, that would be the song. And all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? If everybody did not see, Little Island is opening tomorrow on the West Side Highway, the new little park that's been built. So beautiful weekend. Go explore the new park. All I'm saying. Have a great weekend, every, well, month, everybody, or three weeks. Thank you.